Hello, my name is Reagan. I'm the Doom Wizard. I've been following climate news for eight years. To summarize, if you can't make it all the way through, this is our last stable decade on Earth, where in which humans worldwide will experience food shortages, mass migration, global conflict, rampant diseases, electricity shortages, to name a few. From B&E and Telenews, the models are wrong. Climate change is accelerating faster than predicted. From the top, scientists are starting to realize that the climate models they have been using to predict the rate of global warming are wrong as it becomes clear temperatures are rising faster than predicted. The world has just registered the hottest year on record, hotter than expected by the climate models, and as a heat wave sweeps the world this spring coupled with sea temperatures already smashing all-time highs set only last year, it appears this year is going to be even worse than last year, Berkeley Earth reports in its temperature tracker. That is a big problem, as these models have been the basis of action to combat climate change in the 2015 Paris Accords. Governments have been failing to meet the Paris targets, but it was thought that there was still time to make a difference. But if the models are wrong and underestimating the pace of climate change, it may be that it is already too late to prevent climate catastrophe. Certainly, the academic papers covering climate change are already starting to sound more shrill in their reporting on the trends and begun to call global warming an existential challenge. The problem appears to be that while climate models accurately account for the effects of greenhouse gases have on weather systems, the academics didn't take into account the effects of sulfur dioxide out of ship fuel is having. A global campaign to remove SO2 from ship exhaust was launched in 2020 and has been very successful. SO2 is a GHG, but its side effect was that once it was in the atmosphere, it was also very effectively reflects sunlight back into space, cooling the planet. Once the SO2 was removed, more sunlight reaching the planet's surface and net, net is increasing the temperature more than removing SO2 as a GHG is cooling it. They've included a chart here to show global SO2 emissions by region. When it comes to the climate risk, quote, Aerosols are wickedly more complicated than greenhouse gases, according to a recent paper in Nature. Aerosols must be included in climate risk assessments. Quote, the silence on aerosols that we have set here has become self-fulfilling because the current toolkit is largely blind to the climate risk. Much of the community has come to view aerosols as largely unimportant. This has limited the sophistication, realism, and range of risk model that is aerosol aware. The IPCC 6 assessment was prepared for COP28 and is current touchstone of climate change results relies mainly on the patterns of climate effects from warming driven by GHGs when quantifying climate impact drivers. All of these models are only as good as the data they ingest. The aerosol emission in inventories that are fed into Earth system models are often coarse in space and time, creating uncertainty. In fact, 2021 studies showed that the version of this inventory that was used for the latest IPCC report markedly underestimated trends in aerosol emissions in China over the past five to ten years. In scientific terms, aerosol affects the earth energy imbalance. EEI is rising and the EEI effect was not included in the climatic models. The problem with sunlight, a new vector on calculating global warming, is made worse by the current solar cycle called cycle 25. That is irradiating Earth with more heat than normal, which is expected to peak in this year or next. Neither of these effects are included in the current climate models and should be. Quote, the models don't take into account the reduction of aerosols over Western Central Europe and underestimate regional warming by 0.5 degrees Celsius and summer warming by 1 degree Celsius. Climatologist Lee Simmons said in a recent post, included a chart of climate models versus the actual observed satellite data and more absorbed sunlight. Acceleration. The EEI effect is being seen around the world. Europe has warmed faster than any other region since the 1980s, with annual mean temperature increasing twice as much as the global average. This is even more pronounced in the Western Europe, where temperatures are increasing nearly three times faster than the global average. Russia's Arctic regions were warming twice as fast as the rest of the world a few years ago, as the poles tend to warm faster than the equator, but the rate 
has risen to seven times as fast last year, according to recent meteorological research from Russia. In general, 20 out of 35 environmental signs that climatologists use to track the state of play have crossed their upper safe bounds limits sooner than predicted. Everywhere you look, new records are being shattered, and during the spring in some regions of Africa and Asia in particular, they're being broken on a daily basis. In the latest disaster, scientists have been reporting that 80% of the Earth's coral is already dead or dying due to the abnormally high sea temperatures. Quote, it's not like we're breaking records by a little bit now and then. It's like a whole climate just fast-forwarded by 50 or 100 years, says Brian McNoldy, senior research associate at the University of Miami Rosenthal School in New York in a recent interview. The climate models that are excluding the effect of removing sulfur dioxide are badly under- underestimating the rate of the world warming. Negative effects that are not expected to manifest themselves for hundreds of years are already becoming visible. The North Atlantic Ocean was particularly area concerned with temperatures there described as bath water. The temperature readings in the basin were, quote, off the charts at the start of this year, according to Copernicus, a branch of the European space program. The hotter than it should be the Atlantic is threatened to cause the AMOC to collapse at some point, a current that brings warm water from the equator to the north. As BNE and Telenews reported, if that happens, it can lead to a mini ice age in northern Europe where winter temperatures could fall by as much as 30 degrees Celsius. The unusual heat in the sea was not predicted by scientists, even allowing for last year's El Nino effect, and has led them to ask if some other factor is at work, causing warming to accelerate. Increasingly, they are conducting the answer is yes, the models are wrong. Things are worse than they seem. Quote, we don't really know what's going on. End quote. Gavin Schmidt, the director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, says in New Yorker, end quote, we haven't really known what's going on about since March of last year. Scientists are going back to the drawing board as more data comes in and allows them to test their models. Last summer's record-breaking temperatures has set alarm bells ringing as the models were badly off. Quote, in much of Western Central Europe, summer temperatures have surged three times faster than the global mean warming since 1980, and this is not captured by most climate model simulations. The team concluded that failing to include the EEI effect from removing aerosols from the air has had a huge effect and recommended that the entire climate model regime that governments have been basing their decisions on needs to be completely overhauled. The study went on to compare the current median temperature predicted by a few of the leading models there are more than 30 respected models in the IPCC, showed the actual temperature was a lot more than the model's median prediction and indeed above even their most extreme upper bands. European Environment Agency has released its first ever climate impact report in April, has also warned of climate models that have been underestimating the pace of warming and making some dire predictions. The observed rate of increase of annual temperature for specific regions in Europe was more than 2.5 times the global mean temperature increase. In one chart that extrapolates temperature increase in Europe predicts temperature might rise as much as 7 degrees Celsius by 2100, and that holding to increase to 2C stated the upper goal is least likely scenario. Quote, population exposure to extreme heat is projected to increase 172 million per year by 2100 under low emissions and to nearly 300 million a year under high emissions scenario. And aside, the report also predicted increasing health risks are already appearing as a result of temperature increases already seen. Quote, mosquito and tick-borne diseases that have been expanded their range have recently emerged in the EU, including West Niles, dengue, Lyme disease, and Congo fever. Biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation is a major environmental threat in Europe and it's accelerating. The pace of heating picks up, water and agriculture is going to come under increasing pressure. Quote, increasing frequency and severity of low flows will lead to hydrological of droughts and worsening water scarcity in southern and western Europe. Food production is at risk from reduced water availability and quality as well as deteriorated status of terrestrial and marine ecosystems. The academic research has become uncharacteristically shrill in its warnings. A regular update on the climate change in 2023 published by Oxford was entitled Entering Uncharted Territory and warned most of the climate 
benchmarks have been moved into the flashing red warning zones. Quote, life on planet Earth is under siege. We are now in uncharted territory. For several decades, scientists have been consistently warned of future marked by extreme climatic conditions because of escalating global temperatures caused by ongoing human activities that release harmful GHGs into the air. Unfortunately, time is up, said the paper in December. The team reported that the worst case scenarios are being manifested at an alarming and unprecedented succession of climate records are broken, causing profoundly distressing scenes of suffering to unfold. We are entering an unfamiliar domain regarding our climate crisis, a situation no one has ever witnessed firsthand in the history of humanity. Moreover, after a brief respite from the virus, the three important GHGs, CO2, methane, and nitrous, have all reached record levels in 2023. Moreover, the global average carbon dioxide concentration is now approximately over 420 parts per million, which is far above the planetary boundary of 350. Quote, the effects of global warming are progressively more severe and possibilities such as a worldwide societal breakdown are feasible and dangerously underexplored, the Oxford paper says. By the end of the century, let's say 2040, an estimated 3 to 6 billion individuals, approximately one-third to one-half of the global population, might find themselves confined beyond the livable region, encountering severe heat, limited food availability, elevated mortality rates because of the effects of CC. Big problems need big solutions. Therefore, we must shift our perspective on the climate emergency from just being an isolated environmental issue to a systemic existential threat. There. I read it. I knew what was happening for several years now, that we weren't making any change or policy in effect that would alter our course. Find peace whenever and wherever you can. This is our last stable decade on Earth. Thank you for watching.